Hi there, I'm Simon Lindgren and this is an updated Textometrica tutorial video. For those of you who haven't seen this software package before, it will be an opportunity to see how you work through these steps of text analysis, uh, ending up with a graph, a network visualization of full text content. And for those of you who are familiar with Textometrica, uh, this will be uh, also an introduction to some new features that weren't there before. We need to upload a text file. It's supposed to be in the UTF-8 format and uh, it has to be delimited in some way so that text blocks can be identified. These might be articles, tweets, blog posts, paragraphs, sentences, whatever, but you need to prepare the text so that it has a recognizable delimiter uh, uh, in those places where you where you want the text to be chopped up into blocks. I have uploaded here uh, as an example text the Communist Manifesto. Uh, I have delimited this on the sentence level with the pipe symbol which is the default delimiting symbol in Textometrica. There's also a default kill list that can be edited also. Uh, which includes uh, special symbols, characters that you want to be filtered away from the text. The pipe symbol has a specific checkbox here since it's used as, as the separator in the kill list. If you want to remove the, the pipe, you, you just tick the box. Uh, you can remove words based on what they start with, what they end with, or combinations of symbols, letters, numbers that they contain. Uh, here it can be helpful, for example, while scraping data from social media and stuff and you want to remove like uh, URLs or uh, hash symbols, things like that. Uh, and uh, we can also set a filter here to exclude words based on their length. Uh, we have a stop word list uh, here. Uh, automatically, by default, uh, this one uh, sits in this box, uh, a list of standard English language stop words that uh, will be filtered away. But you can of course edit this list, you can delete it and paste it in a list in another language or an alternative English stop word list, etc. Since we often work with internet uh, lingo and since it might be interesting to use uh, the word I uh, in your analysis, all other individual letters are removed by the stop word list. We, we have specific selectors for I and you, as in uh, the like first person subject and uh, the person that he or she is interacting with, you, that may be written with this single instance of you in, in English, especially like when you want to keep tweets short and stuff. So that's why these can be selected separately. Uh, then we can press next. We have the frequency list down here with the words and their frequencies in the data set and we can select to view the list based on where various uh, frequency intervals like looking only at the words with a frequency of 1 or looking at the very top of the list uh, might also be helpful. So we can switch back and forth with these filters, also in this process uh, finding those words that we want to use uh, for further analysis. So uh, I can sort the list in various ways, based on word, based on frequency, based on whether they are selected or not, and update the list. Words can be selected uh, uh, in various ways, like we can select all the words in the project, we can select all the words that are visible at the moment, and we can also paste in a list of words that we are interested in, and if they exist in the project, these will be selected at the press of this button, like this. So for this example, we're gonna deselect all, I'm gonna set the filter to include words that occur 20 times or more in this material, or that is in 20 text blocks or more, since we remove duplicate entries when moving from step one to step two. Uh, I'm gonna select all of these visible words here. So now I have selected all words with a frequency of 20 or more, it goes up to 76. We can also switch the list to show uh, in descending order. So there we go. 
So after having made this decision that can be sort of based on numbers, like we want to use only words that have a certain frequency, or it might be based on a manual uh, uh, selection, going through the list, deciding based on your research questions or previous knowledge of this material that you words that you you feel uh, are important to your analysis or you can paste a set of words in here that you have uh, found uh, to be important in another data set and you want to make a comparison or it can be a list of like, words uh, uh, naming emotions or naming certain social uh, classes or whatever so that you get a, a kind of auto coding here so now it's time to move further to step three. Step three is where we define the concepts for our analysis. And uh, the notion of concepts uh, in the context of Textometrica is in fact uh, referring to a grouping of words. For example, to make a simple point, we see here two words, bourgeois and bourgeoisie, in the Communist Manifesto that occur uh, in the data set and we might want to standardize this so in order to do this i create a, a concept for this i add that concept and i can add both of these words to one and the same concept so that bourgeois and bourgeoisie now belong to one and the same concept they will be coded together or merged into a concept uh, let's say we want capital to be uh, continue to be a single unit in the analysis at the word level. Then we just leave it as it is, because then Textometrica will use this word to create automatically a one word concept called capital. So from the perspective of the user, just don't do anything with this word and it will continue to appear as a single word. Apart from these uh, language-related corrections, we might also want to code things together based on uh, theoretical or other types of connections where we, let's say, we want to have uh, conditions and production uh, joined together, for example. We can do this by creating conditions of production. And this would then be based on the knowledge that this is a concept that's used frequently uh, in in the in the communist manifesto conditions of production for that one and conditions of production for that one and this can be done uh, in in a quite refined way you can you can work with this for for a long time and there's also uh, now the function to to go back to the to the actual full text level if we want to see for example in what contexts the the word existence is used we it's a clickable url here that will open up another tab in your browser where the text blocks with existence will be shown uh, and we will see the word in context this is very helpful if we want to decide on how to code these words into concepts. Uh, once we have decided upon a conceptual structure, we're moving on to step four. This is where we get the information on the co-occurrences between concepts in our data set. We have the concept uh, in question and the concept with which it co-occurs. These are the individual frequencies of the concepts and we also have their co-occurrence frequency. So bourgeois occurs 118 times in the material, the class occurs 63 times, and they occur together 35 times. And uh, these co-occurrence frequencies in the second column, uh, we often end up with very high co-occurrence frequencies for some concepts, which will make the, the graph that will be the end product of this analysis kind of unbalanced and very much focused on a number of extremely large nodes. So one way of getting uh, past this, if we want to do that, is to use instead the normalized co-occurrence frequency, which is shown in the in the first column, which recalculates uh, and rebalances the, 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 the co-occurrence frequency so that it ends up being a number between zero and one. And we can choose then to, to automatically select the strongest links based on the co-occurrence frequency. 
going to do that. We get uh, a number of, of pairs selected. We could also then do this based on a normalized co-occurrence frequency, or we could filter the list manually and uh, select uh, couples uh, individually or by using certain filters for viewing them and then selecting or deselecting those visible. At this point we can download various uh, versions of a net uh, format file for, uh, for this analysis and leave Textometrica behind and take this net file further into some other uh, network analysis software that reads uh, this standard net file or we could also stay with with our selected concepts here and move on to the final and fifth step and this uh, the appearance of this graph will of course be completely different based on what type of data set you have fed into Textometrica and what choices you have made throughout the course of your analysis. In this case we have a very basic like schematic of uh, relations between concepts and words in the Communist Manifesto. If you have a more complex and diverse material you might have several clusters, you may have a larger map and so on. Uh, you can work in this view uh, using drop-down menus or even the actual source code down here to alter the look of your graph this uh, uh, network and then download it in the SVG or PS formats. Or if you want to do more refined things, you could always go back to step four and get your net file.